This is a demonstration of problem 747 interpreting debt footnotes on interest rates and interest expense. Boston Scientific discloses the following as part of its long-term debt footnote in its December 31, 2018 10K and the problem has given us the borrowing and credit agreements that Boston Scientific has outstanding for 2018 and 2017 for long-term debt. Also, the problem gives us Boston Scientific's required principal debt repayments due during each of the next five years. And it also discloses the interest expense, weighted average borrowing rate, and cash paid for interest for 2018, 2017, in 2016 and the price of Boston Scientific's bonds as of February 2019. And we're going to use this information to answer questions that the problem gives us concerning Boston Scientific's debt. The first part, Part A, asks what amount of Boston Scientific's long-term debt is due in 2019. So the problem gave us the repayment schedules for the next five years. When we go to 2019, we, set, we see $2,248 million will be due in 2019. The B portion asks, what is the total amount of Boston Scientific's long-term debt as of December 31st, 2018, including the current maturity. So the $2,248 million that we got in Part A was the current maturity. So to get the long-term amount for 2018, we go to the debt footnote and we see $4,803 million of Boston Scientific's debt was due is long-term debt. So if we add the two amounts together, 2,248, 4,803, we get 7,051 million for total long-term debt, including current maturities. The C portion asks, the company's balance sheet reports short-term debt, including current maturities of 2,253 million and 1,801 million in 2018 and 2017, respectively. Compute the average effective interest rate on the company's total debt for fiscal 2018 and compare this to the average rate that the company reports. So first we will take the current uh, maturities for 2018 and 2017, and then we're going to copy from the long-term debt the amount of the long-term amounts, and we're going to get the spreadsheet has added or summed the current and the long-term, and then I got an average by adding these two total debt amounts together and dividing by two. Now the uh, problem gave us the current interest expense for 2018, 241 million. So to get the average interest rate, we take 241 million and divide it by the average debt of 6,336 million, and we got an average interest rate of 3.8%. The problem asked us to compare that to the average interest rate that Boston Scientific reported for 2018. Boston Scientific reported 3.6%. So we came up with a slightly different number. Why is that? Well, this is a weighted average borrowing rate. So that means that Boston Scientific determined that by determining the, aver the weighted average interest rate for each portion of the debt. We took the total debt and divided it by two, which is a simple average. So that is the reason why the two amounts are slightly different. In the D portion, it asks, explain how the amount of cash paid for interest can differ from the amount of interest expense recorded in the income statement. 
so the information from Boston Scientific indicated they paid $262 million in cash and their interest expense was $241 million. So if you remember from your chapter, interest expense differs from interest paid due to the debt being is issued at either a discount or a premium. Cash interest is based on the coupon rate and interest expense is based on the market or effective rate at the time that the bonds were sold. So since Boston Scientific's interest expense and cash paper interest are fairly close, that means that most of their bonds probably sold at or near par. The E portion of the problem states the 1,000 million 4% note due in 2028 is priced at 109.35 or 109.35% of face value as of early 2019, resulting in a current yield of 2.8%. Assuming that the company's credit rating has not changed since the bond was issued, what does the pricing of this 4% bond imply about interest rate changes since Boston Scientific issued the bond. So this is the bond that they are talking about. The coupon rate is 4%. The current price of the bond is 109.35. The current yield is 2.8%. So we know the current yield is the market rate. The market rate is below the coupon rate. So we know when the market rate is below the coupon rate, that the bonds will sell at a premium because the coupon or the interest rate that the bondholders will receive is higher than the current market rate or what they could get from other bonds. So that pushes the price of the bonds up. That means that interest rates have probably fallen, or we know they've fallen, since these bonds were originally issued. In the F portion, it states, compare the bonds that mature in 2023 and 2028 and explain why the bond with the higher coupon rate has a lower yield. So these are the two bonds that they're asking us to compare. This one has a coupon rate or pays more interest than this one, but, but the higher coupon rate has a lower current yield. Why is that? Well, it has to do with the maturity dates. These bonds are going to mature sooner in 2023. These bonds will not mature until 2028. Investors require a higher interest rate for a longer maturity. So since the 2028 bonds will mature later, that makes the current yield or market rate higher than the bonds that will mature in 2023. The original coupons on the bonds have no effect on that. What determines the current yield is what the current market rate is. And that is the conclusion of the demonstration for problem 747.